What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming. We're out here in a Wolf City today.
but let's fix it now. Let's identify what we can fix now. So I'm a brother, now we can I'm a brother, one of Jonathan's cousins. God, God, we love to spend the family in our heaven to pay us a lot. We try to spend the money on the people. Good luck, right? So for those of you guys that don't know, um, Saturday night, Jonathan Price was murdered right here at this Exxon gas station by a local police officer. And uh, my belief is right now they're trying to cover it up. But um, we have Lee Merritt, a civil rights attorney out here that's taking the case. Treating, caring, and loving for each other like that. And maybe 
we can dismantle this broken system. Justice for one of the Y'all, I just want to make two great clear. One of the things that I get to do to do So the, the city shut down the uh, highway right here. I'll go over there and show you guys in a little while. I'm going to bring up my uh, good friend, the king, the mayor, and the king, the king, the king. I do a few years ago with the family. This is his mother, and his dad is his mother. Can you hear me? see a local minister right now talking. Sorry, you guys probably can't hear. But I'm glad to see so many people turned out here. Every one of you needs to speak to the governor of Texas. 
Every one of you needs to speak to the county commissioner. Every one of you needs to speak to the district attorney of Hunt County who has the capacity to issue a warrant tonight. And any delay is an affront to the community. There's failure. Every day that they go without making an arrest is like burning a building. We shouldn't have to see a building burn for a step. We are upset because this community currently, right now, is in a non justice and we're trying to I'm happy to be to, uh, to partner with and to work with an attorney who is not only one of the leading attorneys in the country, uh, but he is from this city. He was born and raised in the 80s, taught the city with his family, with his family, and he used to be about how to stop the United States of America. And I think that's that. And I appreciate it. You may be able to work with him all out to the country and the country. Texas. I said Wolf City, Texas. You from Wolf City, Texas. Let me hear your voice right now. Woo! Woo! See, I think what a lot of people have misunderstood. We're not torn apart here in Wolf City, Texas. See, we've always been together. We've had a lot of things happen over the years, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. We stayed together. That's right. Uh, we fought it out on football fields, basketball courts, and baseball diamonds. But we stayed together. That's right. There's a lot of outsiders here today. Yeah. I don't think uh, my time growing up here and all come back and visit it that I've ever seen this many outside. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but we don't need outsiders to show us who we are at Wolf City. That's right. We understand what has happened and outside the norm for us. But let me tell you something. I grew up in this town, this is my family. You hey, are my what's family. up, everybody? We don't need outsiders telling us how to love. We don't need outsiders telling us how to feel. We don't need outsiders telling us how to mend this thing that has been torn apart. It was an outsider that caused this chaos. And we will put it back together. I can never think of a time growing up in this town that we ever had racial tension. We didn't have it. I had as many white friends as a dear black friends. In fact, I even forgot you were white. <laughs> so when I started seeing things post, when I started getting the calls and the text messages, I put down what I was doing. And I said, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm not going to go. I'm coming home. And we together are going to see to it that justice prevails. We're looking for three things here right now, y'all. Three things. Number one, we must, beginning tonight, properly honor and pay tribute to John. Amen. He deserves that. And guess what? It's like none other that we've ever done before. Every single time we have lost somebody here in Wolf City, there's always been a Wolf City standard. We bake cakes, we bake pies. Um, we come and light at your house all night if you need us. Pick you up, drop you off, and love on you. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to honor Jonathan. Secondly, we want everybody to know, beginning with Pastor Hill. Where you at, baby? Where's the name? Pastor Hill, along with other lay leaders, have committed themselves to providing the necessary resources, specifically as it relates to counseling services, for those who are directly and indirectly affected by this tragedy. 
We want to make sure that you get that. You do not have to grieve alone. God's word really tells us He will never leave nor will He forsake us. And it is this time now that we turn to our spiritual leaders for guidance. And third, we must, we must keep our trust and our faith in God and have confidence in the judicial system such that a thorough and complete investigation will be done in a timely manner and that that information will be turned over to the appropriate agency and that we will then proceed to do what justice so requires. Amen? I love what we're seeing right now. This is what you call a peaceful protest. This is what you call unity. Let the world see that Western justice exists. There is no animosity. There is no question. We don't need the world block. We don't need the outside agencies coming in trying to tell us how to behave. We know how to behave. We all were raised right in Wolf City, Texas. I've been all over the world. And never have I met a place like we were sick. I love each and every one of you. Many of us have not seen each other in a long time. It's unfortunate that we are coming together under these set of circumstances. But when it's all said and done, extend the hand of love. Love is going to get us through. Love will get us through. We're going to get justice. Yeah, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. We are a town that's built on love. We demand justice. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Those of us that are from Wolf City maintain the Wolf City standard. Wolf City, Texas? Wolf City, Texas? the appropriate charge be charged on this officer. We are aware that according to many of you guys that this officer has not been here in Wood City that long. Um, we ask that he be terminated. We also ask that a review panel be created to make sure that the next person who replaces him understands the dynamics of this community and feel and can represent and feel comfortable with all races, colors, and creeds in this community to make sure that this never happens again. We, these are, in that last thing that I said, that your mayor and your city council can be able to do that. Create that panel so that you, the community, can be able to sit on there and be able to make sure that this person, this person, understands the dynamics of this community. We ask all of these things in that order. We want justice now. We want justice now. Say his name. 
Say his name. Jonathan Price. 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 I might not be from Wolf City, but I can tell you I know many cities that have stood where you are right now trying to find out, trying to find out what happened. And yet at the end of the day, we're coming here to make sure that you guys have the tools to make sure and prevent these things from happening. And yet make sure that transparency is given in this case, because at this point, the agency who have been investigating this case have not been transparent to this family. This family still to this day do not know what went on with their loved one. But I want I don't want to talk too too much. Okay. So so I, I wanna open up the floor real quick to to some people in community people who knew Jonathan. I know some of the guys probably be coaches, friends, childhood friends. And um, I'm going to start off with his cousin, Terrence Wright. Um, and then I'm just going to be saying some and spit some words out and some people who would like to share with this crowd. Um, it's supposed to be a candlelight, so we got to let the, it got to get a little dark. So, it's kinda, <laughs> so don't ask me what time is over. It's kind of when the, when the dawn set, you know, so. So at the end of the day, we waiting on the sun to finally go down. Um, and I hope that other people brought candles because unfortunately I thought it was the Dollar General, but that Dollar General closed down early because I guess the local municipality was able to alarm all of the business municipalities rather than standing up for justice and we couldn't go in there and buy no candles. So I hope that a few of you guys brought candles instead. And, 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 and if we don't have no candles, we all got lights on our phones, all right? Yeah. We don't we improvise for the 21st century, all right? So, so at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Terrence Wright. But remember, we want what? Justice. When do we want it? Now. When do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Mr. Wright. Hey, real quick, real quick. We only, we only have a, uh, we only have a, a small speaker, y'all. We only have a small speaker. So if we can, if we can, if we can calm the conversations down just a little bit, just a little bit, y'all. If we can calm the conversations down just a little bit, so that we can be able to hear. We only have a, a small speaker, y'all. All right. How's everybody doing? I want everybody to look to your neighbor and, and hug them. Hug, hug them. Hug your neighbor. Hug your neighbor. Everybody hug your neighbor. Jonathan's smiling right now. Jonathan's smiling right now. He, 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 he can't be y'all. I just thank y'all for everybody for being here. All the people, y'all just, y'all mean so much to me. We don't gotta cry anymore. It's, it's, no, it's no more crying. It's no more crying. He's in a better place now. It's, it's gonna hurt for a little bit. It's gonna hurt. But the, but the 07 boys, we're gonna keep it together. Richie and Case, we're, we're all gonna keep it together, buddy. I love you. But, but, but yeah, Joshua Denny, you're here, you're hitting. Yes, we're, we're gonna make, we're gonna get through this, baby. I love everybody. I love all my people. I just love y'all. And thank y'all, every, everybody, for being here. Thank you. Hey y'all, continue to pay, pray for that mother's strength. Continue to pray for her strength. It's going to be some hard couple of days for her. 
and each day is not going to be easier for her until Saturday. So, so at the end of the day, I ask that y'all just continue to pray for her strength. Um, I believe, let me say this real quick. Um, it, it's a community out here. Um, I know there's a few people that know Jonathan. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the mic, but but let me say this quick. I'm a Baptist preacher, so don't come up here doing no monologues, okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna do this, okay? So <laughs> all right, you go. You rambling, you rambling, you rambling, you know. So so and let me say this quick. And say I I I know one thing. Uh uh, like like Lee said, Jonathan make make me want to renew my membership. Um. <laughs> And I just want to say this real quick. If, if it's something that you don't need to share, don't share it. Okay. <laughs> if your mind is guessing, which you don't want to share, don't do it. Okay. So, all right. So, at the end of the day, uh, I'm just going to open it up or whatever and stuff like that to hear you, the community, people who grew up with him. Um, I want to thank all of uh, the organizers and activists who have traveled across the country throughout this state to come here today. Y'all give them a hand. And, uh, cousin, you want to say something? You want to say no more? You good? You good? All right. So football coaches, friends, families, everybody. Don't run up here all at the same time. Um, Nobody wants to speak. Oh, OK. Somebody? Somebody, huh? You already said it all? Everybody said it all? Everybody said it? Oh, no one wants to say no. Okay, sound like one. Um, what do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Um, I, I, I saw Dr. Grayson in the crowd somewhere. Um, you want to say a few words? <laughs> God bless. Thank you. My name is Dr. Pamela Grayson. I'm a resident of Dallas, and I saw that this happened. I guess what I need for y'all to know that I feel, I was raised in Illinois in a small town just like Wolf. I had 72 folks in my graduating class, and that was considered B. And two of us were black. I, I went on to college. I have stayed out of trouble. I've earned three degrees. The last one, the doctorate, only 3% of America has, and only 2% of that 3% looks like me. I have worked to be a contributing citizen. I have raised two brilliant sons. But yet, with me doing everything that I could do right by society standards, I still get stopped. I, I still get stopped and my license ran as if I'm a common Thug. It doesn't matter. So when you, it's said that maybe if he complied, maybe if she complied, well, she should get a job. She should have done right. I did that. And it still didn't matter. Jonathan did that. And it still didn't matter. Brianna did that. It still didn't matter. A Tatiana did that. It still didn't matter. Both of them did that. It still didn't matter. Philando did that. It still didn't matter. Sandra did that. It still didn't matter. Alton did that. It still didn't matter. Camille did that. It still didn't matter. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? We like to dismiss and discount our experiences. America treats us differently regardless 
of how well we meet your expectations of success. And I need for y'all to help me. I need for y'all to speak up. Not just for Jonathan, but for myself, for everyone I've named. So we can say that everybody in Wolf City was raised right, but look what still happened. The change that needs to take place in this country, it needs to take place everywhere, whether or not we want to admit it. Wolf City, I'm sorry. Because I looked at Jonathan too, he looked like he was definitely handsome, y'all. He was fine. Woo! But not to dis diminish who he was. That was a loss right there. He was still a child of God that should be here. And you got to admit there's a problem. Black people aren't making it up. We're not playing a race card. There is a problem. And we're asking you to collectively. All lives can't matter until the black lives do too. So again, I say, I, 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 they had to take his mom away. Yeah, you'd have to pick me up too. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you have a child you raised and just somebody took them here today, gone tomorrow. As a mom, I can't wrap my mind around that. And I'm so sorry for the Price family. I'm praying for y'all. We are going to stand for y'all. We are going to fight for y'all. Because again, I got an eight-year-old out here. I need for things to change so that if my son sees something going on and he tries to help the situation, the situation doesn't take his life. Yes. So I'm praying for y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out because this is a beautiful, diverse crowd. And one thing I would ask, I see spots of color. I don't know why we can't mingle. When he said, hug your neighbor, your neighbor shouldn't have looked like you. Y'all have a good night. Yo, um, our next speaker, I'm gonna bring up one of Jonathan's class classmates. He, they was brought up together. Y'all give them strength, y'all. And I can't say it no more, more than what I've already said. Y'all give this family strength. Give them strength right now, y'all. Give them strength. Um, I know this mother had to leave or whatever, and 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 I can tell y'all when we went to the house, um, and right prior to, she wasn't even supposed to come. Um, and she just felt like she had the strength to come. But y'all give it to her, y'all. You know. Um, but I know that somewhere in our heart, she's gonna remember that Wolf City, this region, this area, the state has came out for her baby. Um, and, and standing in solidarity for justice for uh, Jonathan Price. Y'all give it up for his classmates. Well, my name is Jason Malone. I, don't, I ain't never had the courage to come up and do this in front of all these people before, but... Uh, my family raised Jonathan for a short period of time growing up called to my brother. He was with me the night that he got shot here tonight, or the other night. Uh, I want to say that racism ain't all over this town, I'm going to tell you that right now. There, there's a select few of us that are fucking fucked up. I'm going to tell you right now, I, there ain't not one black piece of person that knows me here that knows that I am I love them just as much as my family. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what to do to make this any better for everybody, but uh, like I said, he was my brother just like he was his fucking brother, you know what I mean? Uh, I just hope that 
a good statement comes out of here of a white man come out here and talk to about this black man because he's a good man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to say. Y'all give him strength, y'all. Y'all give him strength. Y'all give him strength, man. That's that's a real testimony and hearing from you guys. Um, our next two speaker, uh, one of my sisters, uh, Shima, uh, from We Take the Streets, and I believe uh, my other sister, Tramonica, uh, from Not My Son, and they're going to come up and speak in that order. I usually don't do well talking when situations like this are so new. I feel like the way they feel, I feel it too. And we're talking and feeling this way. I don't want to get off work and drive two hours to Wolf City, Texas to support my black family that just lost someone for the same reason <laughs> that we're even out here protesting, that we're even activists in our community. I'm glad that the crowd is this diverse. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting this at all. And I appreciate that Wolf City. <laughs> Seeing this crowd gives me a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. It's not fair. It's never been fair. And it is up to y'all to make it fair. Because nobody listens to us and it's been proven. We've been saying it time and time again. And the fact that we're over here speaking and there's laughter in the back, that angers me. That angers me. This officer We need justice. We need justice. We need justice. I don't know how y'all demand justice out here, but y'all need to demand the justice. I don't want to fuck up nobody's town. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to the family. But if y'all don't demand justice, oh, we're coming back. We're coming back. We're not letting it slide anymore. No matter how you were raised, who raised you, where you were raised at, once a black man, always a black man. Once a black man, always a black man. You're born a black man, you are going to die a black man. That's the bottom line. And as long as my brothers and my sisters and, my, and the mothers, aunts, uncles, as long as my family is black, plus believe I am fighting for them. I will always fight for them. I don't have to be from Wolf City. I don't have to be from Louisville, Kentucky. I don't have to be. But I feel it deeply in my soul and I will fight for them no matter what. But like I said, Wolf City, this is this is beautiful. This really is beautiful and I appreciate it. Hey, real quick, real quick. I see the uh y'all lighting the candles. Y'all actually doing it too fast. Can y'all blow them out? Because there is a certain part where we're gonna have the candles lit. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. But I, I, I see they passed out the candles and people started lighting them. I don't want the candle to be running out by the time we actually need them. Okay, so, so, so give me just a quick second, like 10, like, give us about, I think, 
get a son. Don't give me about 15 more minutes, and I probably we're gonna light this thing out, and um, we're gonna exit. Uh, Y'all give a hand for my sister uh, Tramonica from not my son. I would ask how everybody is doing, but I'm pretty sure we already know that. Um, again, I'm Shamonica Brown. I'm the founder of Not My Son. And I'm sorry, from the bottom of my heart, I hate that we have to continuously fight this fight. I told somebody today, I really wish we didn't even have to use the word social activism because it's getting to a point to where we're just tired. When we were on our way back from Fort Hood, we got the news and it was just like it's one thing after another and we're not, it feels like we're not progressing. But today to see so many people be able to come together under these types of circumstances, it's showing me that it's faith of a mustard seed and that's all we need. So we got to try to find some type of positivity in these very dark days because for a lot of us who give our time to this and who have to constantly go and move and fight. I just want to say I am sorry to the family. I am sorry to the people who invest their lives into this movement because it's hard. And at the end of the day, this one, everybody should be here. Because this one, we cannot say he had this, or he was doing this, or he was bad with this, or he had drugs, or anything of that sort. I have spoken with family members, and the number one thing, yes, the number one thing that I have heard is that he was not only a pillar in his community, but he poured into his community. And we don't have a lot of examples of what a black man is supposed to look like. So you actually took a black man that was loved by everybody. Because I even watched Smash the Topic and I seen that it was not black people that was getting in front of him when that debacle was going on. It was a white woman. So I appreciate the allyship. Oh, it was you? Yes, it was. It was. Can you say no, baby? I see. Not on my watch. Thank you. And I feel like it's so important, and I'm thankful that we have people who are now stepping in front and being more a part of the narrative. Because I told somebody a while ago when they were saying, well, why do you want white people out here? Let's take it all the way back. Had white people not decided that I'm sick of this shit too, there would be no Underground Railroad. It takes that. We need allies, so thank you. Because we can't stop racism with black people telling you black lives matter. When a white person say, I be goddamn black lives matter, that's when we start getting real justice. So again, yes, thank you for supporting what everybody has called their hometown hero. Because the stuff that I have read and to be able to talk to people and to see how people genuinely feel about this man who even live in Dallas, he was somebody and he still is. To have somebody that can pour into their community and to be a positive influence, I have to say this because y'all do not understand, to have a real black man who stands in the gap and is an example yeah. for another black man, that is a lot. We lost a lot. I know Dr. Pamela Grayson said we lost something else with him, but, <laughs> but we lost a lot to have an African, uh, not Af just black, to have a black man be strong and be an example and really love his community. When I talked to the family, they said, we do not want riots here. We love our community. That's not what we want. We just want justice. From my understanding, it's only what? Three police officers? Y'all are... Well, two, and yeah, and the third one was Lucas. And so when somebody asked me, what do you want? I said, I want to actually get something out of 2020 other than an F you, because that's been a lot of that this year. I don't know if y'all feel that way, but we've been losing and losing. They lost, we lost with Brianna. I don't want to lose with this man. And I'm willing to do whatever I can do to contribute to carry his narrative because guess what? It is such a beautiful and positive narrative. And we have to make sure that we hold those people accountable and again, hold his name and say his name to the highest esteem. So I get it, roads get hard and people get tired. But when you have somebody like Mr. Price, we have to stand up. 
You need to be involved. Figure out what you can do because everybody can do something to keep this momentum happening. This is a small town. From my understanding, Lee Merritt is representing him. He has Lee Merritt representing him. You got people coming all over. I know Councilman Shimwell is out here. You have to, it is support here. Dallas is supporting you. Make sure that when we leave, you keep supporting yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Latinx is also here. That's something else that I just that it I hurt it hurts me. But we go to these other towns, and I'm a big person, and I say this all the time. We have to sweep our own porches first. So yes, we're here. Yes, I love and I want to meet, try to meet as many of y'all as possible before I leave. But I don't live here. This is not where I can stomp my feet the hardest. You live here. Raise your hand if you live here. It's enough of y'all here to do damage. And I'm not saying in looting or rioting. I'm saying doing damage as far as to holding your mayor account accountable. Holding all of your city officials accountable to make sure that the due diligence is done. The family doesn't want it that way. We can let them know that we just as educated. It, it's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Y'all yeah, yeah, country, so y'all count that. I knew you would. I knew you would. But again, I love you guys. And again, my apologies. I send my condolences to every each and every single one of you guys because I know that this is a loss for the community. And I am here. I am open. Anything that I can do to better assist anybody, please let me know. I love you guys, and I'm praying for you. Thank you. Y'all give her a hand. Give her a hand again. Um, so, so, so we about we about ten minutes out or whatever. We got a few condensed speakers, but I wanted to get enough set to where all they see is these um, candles or whatever. So, other than that, I'm gonna bring up these next speakers. Uh, um, uh, but I want y'all to give a hand to um, uh, the speakers who have spoken out here today. Y'all give them a hand. Um, I, I know some of the, I know some of you guys are uh, family friends and, and and classmates and loved ones that knew Jonathan and I know y'all uh, a lot of y'all don't want to say anything, um, but I just want y'all to know uh, this was a moment for you guys to come and and, and start that process of healing. Um, but 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 peace, like I said before, peace come with justice. Um, peace is a reflection of justice. Um, as a minister, I preach all the time that there's no separation between Jesus and yet justice. Amen? There's no separation between Jesus and justice. I know my pastor always say that. Um, and yet at the end of the day, that's what we are out here today. And if we can get the local municipality and the powers that be to focus on justice, that will be great. Um, because there are countless things that we can be doing. Um, it's a lot of work out here in America right now. It's a lot of crazy stuff happening across America. And, and the reason why it's happening that way is because a rainbow coalition of people are not having the conversation and we're allowing the media to have the conversation for us. Uh, media don't tell our narrative they only sell airtime and publications. They don't care whether we reconcile. Uh, racism is a billion dollar industry. Despite whether you back the blue, black lives matter, all lives matter, is a billion dollar industry for them. And if they could keep us just fighting each other and different things of that nature, it, 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 it makes them money. Uh, but but at the end of the day, a people united is the reason why stuff changes in this country. That's the reason why for over 400 years, certain milestones that we can reflect on change because somebody had a conversation and said, I'm not going to allow that person to have that conversation for me. I'm going to actually sit down and focus on that 30%. Focus on it. Um, so... I'm not going to say anything more. Uh, I'm going to bring up one of my sisters um, who has been organizing for years um, throughout this country. Y'all give it up for my sister, Lili.
Um, I would ask y'all how y'all doing, but I can feel the energy and it's, um, it's very unsettling. I've heard a lot of people say how beautiful it was that we came out here together and things like that, and it truly is. But I don't want this to be our last time looking like this. I don't need this to be our last time understanding that this is a problem. It's easy for us, for us to say that racism doesn't exist when racism does not happen to us. It's easy for us to say that rape is not happening when we have not been raped, but guess what? It still goes on. It's still happening to someone. Someone is still a victim, and you cannot use just your personal experiences alone to say that it's not happening to someone else. You have to speak up when someone is speaking out. I know it's children out here and sometimes I say things, my brother actually tried to have a conversation with me before I came up here as if I didn't know how to speak in front of company, but I know how to speak without being too much, but I like to speak in analogies because sometimes we don't seem to understand what's going on and it's hard, it's hard for us to understand how the other side lives. It's easy for us to judge and say, well, it hasn't happened to me, so how can you keep saying that it's happening to you? I've never seen it happen. And then you lose someone. And then you want those same people that you spoke against to come out and fight for your people because now you don't know what to do. And these people have been screaming for so long saying that it's happening over and over again and you've never said nothing but now it's hit your front door and you want somebody to fight. I wore this shirt, y'all, from 2015. It's got Mike Brown on it. It's got a lot of different people and I realized one of the quotes on it that says, I can't breathe, that came from Eric Gardner. Now everybody are getting new I Can't Breathe shirts for George Floyd. History consistently repeating itself. And we thinking that this stuff is going okay because we sit in our little bubbles right now. We social distancing and we doing all of this COVID stuff. And it's easy to say that these things aren't happening, but they are. They are. And it's so hard when you want to be a good person and you want to say, hey, I believe in this country. I believe in, in all of these things and I want to speak and say, yes, let's just hold hands and say that everything is going to be all right. But at the end of the day, when I leave here, I'm afraid of what might happen. I feel like I'm safe here, but I'm telling you, you might not have felt it, but I was scared driving up here. Say that shit. When I left from Dallas and I moved into a different city, I got nervous. When I started hitting those country roads and I didn't see no lights and I didn't see anything, I got nervous. I got really scared. I thought about if my car broke down right now, who would come and help me and if I would make it out alive. When my phone didn't have any more connection, I got scared because what do I do at that point? And I'm using this opportunity to say these things because why it might not affect you. It is a problem that you have to speak up against because guess what? Someone you love was taken. When my daughter was three years old, she came to the hospital after the officer had hit me with his car. That same year, my daughter had to visit me after I had been body slammed multiple times by two officers. I'm a woman, I'm 5'2", I'm 145 pounds. That doesn't seem like much to you, but some people see me as a threat just for being who I am. That is a problem that needs to be changed, and it does not need to be changed with you praying about it. There needs to be action that comes with that prayer. Prayer without action is dead. It's nothing. It means nothing. And it seems so good that we out here today and we shaking hands and we clapping and it feels so good and we go home and we sleep and we act like nothing has happened. We act like tomorrow. Oh, well, you know, I did my part. I went out there. I said I, 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 I lit a candle or two. I, I went to the funeral. I said a couple of words and everything is okay. But let me tell you something. Every time somebody dies, everybody comes and gives their condolences. It never fails. They always give their condolences. I don't care if you're the worst person on earth. People are going to tell you that they feel sorry for your loss or loss. You know, this is a little joke. Try to make y'all smile a little bit. But everybody is going to come in and they're going to tell you some things, right? But in the weeks to come, in the months to come, who is there when you still having pain? Who's still going to be there for that mother when she's still crying her eyes out because her baby is no longer going to come and visit her? He's no longer going to call her. He'll never be able to say anything else to her. Where will you be then? Where will you be when the next 12-year-old child like Tamir Rice is murdered in the middle of the street and you might not know who he is and the news might come out and paint him as a bad person? What will you say? Will you stand up then? What will you do when the next person is murdered inside of their home for something that they did not do? Whether they had drugs inside of it or not, they were in their home. They did nothing wrong. Will you stand up then? Will you wait for another person that you love to be taken to say something? How many more times does it have to happen? 
We bring up a lot of different cases of other little kids and other people that were murdered. But let me tell you the difference between a black life being murdered and a non-black life being murdered. Justice. The difference is when someone goes to jail, a police officer is supposed to uphold the law. The law. They are not above the law. They do not get to be the judge, jury, and executioner. They are supposed to follow the law, follow the rules, and if I check, we pay their bills, we pay their stuff. They are civil servants to us. And just as if you were to get pulled over and felt like it was unfair and to speak your piece, guess what? I have the right to speak my piece as well. Just as you are able to stop and feel like something is unjust and feel like you as a citizen can take it into your hands, why can I not feel the same way? I'm saying these things because we have to take these opportunities not just to be excited about the fact that we are together, but we have to be able to teach each other because each one teach one. It's time for us to say how we truly feel, and it's time for us to say now is the time for change, not tomorrow, right now, today. To teach our children that when something is going wrong at school, when someone is calling them out of their name, when someone is treating them wrong because of the way that they look, to say that's not okay. I'm 27 years old. I'm a woman. And I fear for my daughter in this country. Yes. I fear for her black life. I fear that she can love people like Jonathan and still be killed like Jonathan. I fear that someone is going to look at her and look at her in fear instead of looking at her in love. The change starts with us. I can sit up here and talk to you all day, but guess what? I'm still doing the work. You have got to come and do it with me. It is not an option for me. Yes. You have got to do something more. You have got to say something. Yes. So many women are screaming out and saying, hey, this happened to me. Hey. There are so many movements. There are the Me Too movements. There are all of these different things that are happening right now. And we identify with them because we're women and we know what it's like to walk to your car in the middle of the night and be afraid. And you know what that's like. You know how you feel when somebody says that what you are saying is in your head and that it does not exist. And, oh, it was just an accident. Or, oh, because of something that you wore. I have to put it in terms that you understand because that's how I feel every day of my life. I'm not only a woman in America, I'm a black woman in America. That's like having multiple targets on your back at one time and not feeling like you can get up. It's like being able to, it's like being put into a ditch and people walking around saying, you know, pull yourself up, you'll be all right. Like they just throwing a rope and they, they not going to hold it at the end. They'll say, you'll figure it out. I did it. I was able to get out. Why can't you get out? Don't treat people like that because you don't want to be treated like that. You want justice. You want someone to care for you. So we need to treat people like we want to be treated. Regardless of if you understand it or not, speak to somebody that does. Get an understanding. And I'm going to tell you like this, if you're out here as an ally, it is no longer my responsibility to keep explaining to people why I matter. Why my life is important. Please do it for me. Get your people to stand up. I thank you for being out here, but don't let this be your last time coming out. Don't let this be the last time I see all the flags. And I'm so thankful for the flag that's, cut, that's turned upside down because I've heard so many times people say that that's disrespect. But the flag is supposed to be turned upside down when the country is in distress. We are in distress. Say something. You can't have pride for a country and not be have pride for the people that built this country. You can't have pride for a country and not love the people who this country was built on back. My ancestors were inventors. All I'm asking for you guys is to take tomorrow and make a difference. Take tomorrow and have that same energy that you have today. I want you to love somebody that's next to you. So since we are here, this is a common spirit, and I do need to walk away because I didn't talk a little too long. <laughs> if you guys could please hug somebody that don't look like you. That's it. Thank you.
Y'all give her a hand, y'all give her a hand. I wanna briefly come up real quick. Um, and we're about to we're about to light this candle. Uh, uh, but one of my brothers and sisters from Tyler, Texas drove here today. Um, and I'm gonna have their group come up um, and give us um, two minutes and we're gonna light these candles, all right? Give them two minutes. Uh, y'all give it up for our activist uh, community from Tyler, Texas. Last night I was on my phone and I started getting messages from my friends here. And we're in Tyler, East Texas. We know what that East Texas feeling is like. We know what those communities are like. I'll tell you what, I came out here, this is not what I expected. And I'm a white man coming up, standing up, strong and proud for everybody, these people especially. Thank you. Six and one in, six, one in six African American men, black men go to jail in their lifetime. That's way too many. You can't deny the statistics, the criminalization of this country and what we do to black people. You just can't deny it. You gotta have that heart. I came out here, I didn't expect all these white faces. I swear to God I did, nobody did. Nobody here came out. We were scared because we've been out here and we saw people and if they were white, they were usually strapped and they were usually against us. But I came out early because early I read about Jonathan and I saw his messages and I saw every single one of your comments about what an amazing, wonderful human being he was. Not that he was bad, not that he did some wrong, but that he was an amazing, powerful human being who spread love, cheer, and goodness to everybody in his community. And then I came out here and saw the love that you have for him. That is powerful. We drove out a couple hours from Tyler and I am proud that I did. And when I came out here early, I brought my eight-year-old son, my 14-year-old son, and my 16-year-old son. And I walked around and I didn't know if I was staying or putting them in a hotel because it was how dangerous it would be. Because we've been in those situations. But it's not dangerous. Somebody gave my youngest son a hug. We talked to the community as you guys were boarding up windows and you were like, we were worried that people were gonna come out from outside and break stuff, damage stuff, burn stuff. We got nothing but love for you. If you met us with hate, then hate is what you get. But this community is nothing about love. It's all about love. And as you guys love each other and love Jonathan, expand that love, expand that humanity into the other people of skin color that have it worse. That love doesn't have to be in this local community. That love can go to Dallas, it can go to Tyler, it can go anywhere. You can take this moment, that feeling, that hurt, and you can turn it into positive change. Not just positive change for yourselves, but for your children, for their children, for the world, for everything that we see live in a door around us, we have the power to make it better. If you're white, you can stand up here and be amongst your brothers and sisters just like anybody else. It's not about skin. These are some of my best friends behind me. And I am down for them. And we're out here for Jonathan. And we'll be back out for Jonathan. If you need us, we won't burn anything down, but we'll walk with you hand in hand. We'll take you to the mayor's office. We'll take you to the district attorney. We'll take you to anybody you need to get that justice done. And we'll stand behind you, not in front of you, but behind you. Because this is Wolf City. This isn't Tyler, this isn't Dallas, this is Wolf City. You guys are your own people. We stand behind you, with you. And then show that love towards other people in your communities and surrounding environments. When there's another Jonathan, and unfortunately there will be. Not another Jonathan like Jonathan was, but there will be another Jonathan. And it won't be very long before we get there. And you guys have the power to come out, to show that love. The love we're coming out and bringing to you, man, just pass it on to somebody else. Make this world a better place for everybody. For our children, our grandchildren, white, black. We got to make this world a better place. That's on us. That's in our hearts. That's in our lives. And you all have to carry that with you. Carry that torch. Light it up. Burn it bright. When you get those candles up, those candles are the symbol of the fire that you're going to take with you forward. And take with you down into the promised land. And that's that. Because if you go with the righteous heart, God will be behind you. He'll be with you in spirit. And there's no thing better than love. And I got love for each and every one of you. Y'all take care. All right, y'all. It's the moment that we all came outside of justice for who? Justice for who? All right, so if I can get everybody to light the candles now. We got it, we'll get right on time. And um, 
Um, I didn't, hold on real quick, if we can, let's call it, um, I'm going to do a prayer. Um, I, uh, I'm seeing my singers out here. I'm my singers or whatever. Yeah, I, I need some songs. Hey, hey y'all, real quick, real quick. Hey, real thanks quick, for coming, thanks quick. for coming in, guys. Do it, you can do it a little bit quietly. We can do it a little bit quietly. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a prayer real quick. Do a prayer. Hold on real quick, real quick, real quick. Um, um very tragic what happened here in Wolf City. There's a great man that passed away the other night and got murdered by a police officer. Alright, so um, I, I'm, I'm gonna do something real quick. Um, Jonathan's my characters. Grandma, my, I'm, um, a, I'm a city boy. All these people here testifying. My grandmother how was great country he is. Boy. And um, country woman, country woman. I'm sorry. It's been a long day, y'all. It's been a long day. I've been I've been up since 4 a.m. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She she's she's gone she's gone on home now, but. I'm sorry, Granny. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, but but she was she was country. And, and, and I, I'm gonna share this song real quick because I'm a, I'm a big big music I'm a big music head. So so and I don't have no, normally if this was in Dallas or any other I would have a musician over here because I just love music, right? Uh, um, so um, I'm gonna sing my grandmother's song if that's okay. And then I'm gonna have somebody come pray. It, do we got some ministers out here? Got some ministers? Minister? Okay. Then, oh, other than me, obviously. For me. Alrighty, so so this this song goes, Walk in Jerusalem, just like me. I'm praying to be ready, praying. Pray to be ready. I'm praying to be ready. To just walk in Jerusalem, just like me. I've heard of the land and the far away strand to the beautiful home for the soul built by Jesus on high to the land where we all die to the land where we never grow Somebody say we'll never grow old. We'll never, never grow old. We'll never grow old. We'll never grow old. Eternal we'll Father, we come to you right now, Lord God, just to say thank you. Thanking you for this moment to come to stand together for humanity. Standing for your children, standing in the premise of justice, demanding justice. It is moments like this where your glory reigns, where, where you are most present. Father God, we ask that you come right now and come and be a major presence in this community. As this community continues to prepare for that avenue of justice and yet peace. We ask that you be with this family, continue to guide them, continue to be their comforter at their weakest moments at night. For we know that the next day after next after next, year after year, it's not going to be easy for them. But we know that you will be their strength. You will be their comforter when many cannot be. Father God, right now, I ask that you continue to touch all of the families who mourn loved ones' life who have fallen due to this system that we have to address in America at the hands of law enforcement. Father God, we ask that you continue to increase your presence as we decrease. And I ask that you be with us physically, financially, emotionally, and spiritually. We ask all those things in your son Jesus' name. Justice for who? Justice! Hold on, my, can my candle ain't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
To all of the names who have lost their lives, hold it up in the air. To this community that knew Jonathan Price. Jonathan Dwayne Price. To all of you that assemble here with precious memories. Some of you play football, some of you are classmates, some of you were just neighbors, co-workers, elders in the community that just saw Jonathan raise up. We send you comfort. I hope that y'all tilt this candle so it don't fall down on you. I ain't got no insurance. <laughs> tilt that candle, tilt that candle, just this way, all right? So now don't stop somebody. But, but I know that many of you guys, many of you guys come here because Jonathan's life carried you. And I hope that tonight's assemble gave great comfort. I know it's just that you ain't got to come speak, but I just want, I just want you to step up for y'all. I know she's been the backbone. She's going to have to be the backbone for her mother. She's going to have to be that crush, y'all. And y'all, we, we need to pray for her to be that strength, y'all. Because nobody prepares for this moment. Nobody prepares for this moment. And yet this community is going to have to make sure that this doesn't happen. I would be grateful to travel all across this state and say in Austin and everywhere and say the good people in Wolf City got it together. They held their local elected officials accountable. They didn't allow people to just come here and say healing and peace with no justice. They fought for change, demanded change, put policies in place that prevent these things from happening. Use of force policies, de-escalation policies, these are things that have to be in those general orders of your police department. These are things that people like us can be able to come and give you the knowledge how to be able to talk the language when it comes from laws and policies and local ordinances in your city. But I want to say that a rainbow coalition came together after a man named Jonathan Duane Price died at the hands of law enforcement and they came together to enact change. Why many people who could have been out here that was afraid because the media was yet again telling our narrative, telling our narrative, but I want them to see people who are all standing in unity in the encompass of justice and yet peace there's no separation to it don't let no preacher tell you there's separation into it jesus and justice don't have a separation his life was about justice his life was about change and yet at the end of the day we are here together long live who Jonathan! Long live who? Jonathan Price! Long live who? Jonathan Price! Long live who? Jonathan Price! Good night, I love y'all. Thank you. So we're in Wall City, Texas tonight, guys. And uh, this is the gas station where a, a local law, law enforcement officer murdered Jonathan. He, uh, he was out here visiting his mom. <clears throat> Thank you. 
but the uh, community came out in force tonight. There's probably about three times as many people here earlier. Hopefully my signal is good. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Justin Pulliam did a video on that. I'm sure some other people posted some videos. But yeah, Leon Valley's out of control. We can't trust anything Leon Valley says. Hey, thanks, M Star. Thanks, Pugs. Thanks, Val. Um, NNF. Appreciate everybody coming in. I'll tell you what, this community came out in force to show their support and love for Jonathan. So the, uh, the family's hired attorney, Lee Merritt. He's a national civil rights attorney. We're in a small town in uh, East Texas called Wolf City. Hello, I am Trash. Slab says hello.
<laughs> don't ban friends. Oh, yeah. Some of you guys cracked me up. <clears throat> Boy, I am impressed with how many people have come out to show support and love to this family and for Jonathan. So we'll walk up the street here in a minute, but um, apparently a lot of the residents boarded up their windows and doors thinking that uh, this group was going to try to destroy and burn and terrorize this town. Yeah, Bouncer Slab, thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate it. What's up, Whitebeard? Joe Black. Jonathan Price was his name. They haven't released the, uh, any of the footage they have yet, but we'll be looking forward to that. The uh, family attorney is demanding that they turn over any and all evidence that they have and uh, release the officer's name that, that murdered him. Go Foys? Go Foos? I'm not sure how you say your name. <laughs> I haven't seen any police around. I looked for a few when I drove in town. But, um, I haven't seen Collin, Collin, any uh, Collin County sheriffs. I think this is Collin, Collin County. This, this town came out in force. I'm thoroughly impressed with the citizens of Wolf City. They, uh, they truly do have good, their character speaks for itself. I'm so impressed with these people in this town. This is how every town and every city should react um, when a citizen loses their life due to negligence and reckless murder regardless of who it is that shot them you know right now we're talking about a law enforcement officer that murdered jonathan but this is how we should come out and force anytime we lose a loved one due to uh callous murder and somebody that has hate in their heart This cute little dog over there. Hello, MM and MM Sensei. What's up, Johnny? ND. 
Yeah, that, that one in Leon Valley is going to be difficult because Bexar County is corrupt and uh, Joe Spaggio and uh, Leon Valley is corrupt. Um, DPS and the state troopers, they're not always honest and um, diligent and forthright in their findings. Um, a lot of times they turn a blind eye. So, Leon Valley is going to be difficult. Um, usually because it's the county DA that's our last defense. And uh, we already know Bexar County. <laughs> Bexar County is dirty. So, that's going to be another battle. Uh, the only saving grace on that is uh, body cam and dash cam footage. <laughs> Don't jaywalk. Yeah. I hear you there. We'll walk up the street in a minute. Um, I heard a lot of the residents here boarded up their houses in anticipation for uh, riots and looting and burning, uh, people catching things on fire. But uh, as you see, none of that's happened. This is a uh, Dallas is usually very peaceful. Um, even in the George Floyd riots, there was only a handful of citizens, and we can call them thugs, that. Um, we're doing the looting and throwing rocks and bottle water bottles and acting fools. Um, I would say maybe out of the 500 to 1,000 people that were there, at most is maybe two dozen people doing the thuggish behavior. Um, the majority of people on the streets weren't behaving or acting that way. Walk up the street here. We'll walk up the street here and see what we got. I, uh, I've actually done some work out here in Wolf City. Uh, I helped a family that bought a uh, 150 year old house transport the house about five miles up the road from here out on a hundred acre farm and uh, rebuild it so I've had lunch quite a few times in this Exxon uh, they got some pretty good burritos and chimichangas in there we'll uh, take a look at this memorial that they have out here But when I was driving in, I didn't see a ton of DPS or uh, state troopers or Collin County Sheriff's officers anywhere. Here's a little uh, shrine or memorial that they set up for Jonathan.
this was awesome tonight. This should be the template for every city, every town, um, on what to do and how to behave when uh, something like this happens. The whole town needs to show up. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, gas station that um, Jonathan was murdered at. So uh, Saturday night, Jonathan Price came up here. He was uh, up here visiting his, his mom and dad. Um, and there was a couple fighting and they decided, uh, Jonathan decided to step in We won't, we won't walk too far, but they've uh, blocked this highway, this little highway off for about a half a mile. As you can see, some of the residents are just driving through it. I don't see any houses boarded up. There might be a few, but they might have taken them down. So uh, Jonathan Bryce steps in, he sees a man and a woman arguing and uh, decides to try to be a peacemaker. This uh, Wolf City police officer shows up, um, ends up tasing Jonathan. And then uh, shortly after tasing him, he shot him. The witnesses say, witnesses at the gas station are saying that Jonathan had his his hands up in the air. But uh, witnesses say that Jonathan had his hands up in the air when he got tased and shot. So the uh, family attorney is demanding that uh, they release the uh, any footage that they have. But uh, Jonathan Price was a, a model citizen. And uh, from everything we could tell was a uh, just an outstanding man. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. 
Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. For freedom, I'm sub, I'm star. Hello, Rika. We're about two hours, two and a half hours out of Dallas in a small town called Wolf City. Yeah, we're in Far East, Texas, a town called uh, Wolf City. We had about a group of 500 to maybe a thousand earlier. It seemed like the whole town shut out, the whole county. Yeah, it's Hucky Blue. Um, they're not going to burn nothing down. No, that's just what they're chanting. Small pharmacy and Walgreens and CVS came in and took over their small pharmacy. 
question though if uh, Jonathan Price does not get justice and the city attorney or the, the county DA uh, refused to prosecute with the proper charges which should be murder um, bodily endangerment uh, because he shot in the premise of other citizens um, what should the people do you know not just Jonathan Price's situation but you know at what point in time do we stand up against government tyranny and oppression We know what Americans did in uh, the early 1770s. Um, American patriots burned that shit down. They looted. Uh, they fucking tossed that tea in the, in the ocean. Uh, they brought their weapons and they fought for their freedoms. So they fought against tyranny and oppression. You know, at what point in time are Americans now gonna stand up and say enough is enough. So <laughs> make love. You crack me up, dude. I don't drink tea, but um who knows? Who knows if it's any good? Um, the Boston Tea Party. I heard that the tea that the uh, Patriots threw in the that burned and threw overboard that night uh, were valued at over a million dollars. But um, I can't testify to that whether it's true or not. That's just what I've read. And that was a lot of money back then. So a lot in this community, a lot of people in this community, um, I guess they're trying to set aside the fact that as a police officer that took this lives, this man's life. But um, tragically, um, government tyranny and oppression will soon reach everybody.
that currently occupies what we call our White House. And yet at the end of the day, we have to have real conversations. So it's time out for trying to sugarcoat conversations when we already know what it is, right? And at the end of the day, these, these people were so busy trying to worry about looting and all of the rest of the stuff that they couldn't even focus on the time to actually bring justice for Jonathan Price. And let me say this real quick. Let me say this real quick. Hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. And, and, and let me say this quick. It's going to always be agitators and people that want to come. Let me say this quick. Come over here. Come over here, y'all. Come over here. Because, y'all, let me say this quick. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. In all of my years that is here, these are nothing but paid agitators trying to come. And, and, and they will sit here, right? Who brings, who brings a damn canine to a, 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 a person? You know what I'm saying? They will sit here. They will sit here. And, and, it's a, and, it's, and, and, and let's not, hey, let's not give them no attention. Big snow. Big snow. Big snow. Hold on, hold on, Big snow. Big snow. All right, hey. Now's the time for you to stand by and make sure them officers on that air. Come on back, y'all. Come on back. Hey, real quick, real quick. Real quick. Agitate these protesters. Agitate them because that's what gets them back. Oh, my people! That is my choice, If anybody has to speak to them, let that be your ally. Enjoy them. Come on. Come on. Come 
Well, I thought people were going to start shooting each other there for a minute. It's like a few locals came out and wanted to try to flex their muscles with some weapons. At first, people were just talking and then uh, things escalated. She's trying to get her dog. Her dog ran down there. We're in a small town called Wolf City in uh, Far East Texas. Wolf City, Texas, we were out here for a peaceful vigil and uh, we had a few individuals that came out after the rally. I'm not sure if they're undercover police officers or what, but they come up to the crowd with their weapons. As you can tell, nobody's burning anything, nobody's looting anything, nobody's breaking windows. You guys locals? Everybody yeah. knows everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he's a good guy. Yeah, he was. Done some work out here. I only have two houses down from the store. Yeah. <laughs> was it crazy the other night, Saturday night when it happened? Mm -hmm. Did you? Do you know the officer's name that shot him? I don't know his name. He's new to the he's been free from around here very long. About like six months, I think. About, about, about six, eight, six, eight, six or eight months. About six, eight months in. Yeah, but he ain't been here long. Yeah, I've had lunch at that. That guy's here some quite a few times in the restaurant right here. Pick you out five. I'm a boy. That one's bad. Hey, 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 that one's bad. Hush, dude. 
<laughs> we don't want any trouble. We want to avoid trouble. We want to avoid trouble at all costs. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's here to do nothing to break windows. Yeah, you know. Yeah, this is a friend here. We, we come down to check on him. We thought, man, maybe his glasses have been busted out or whatever. I didn't know. Hey, Mamie. Hey. What you doing, I don't know why, but one, one of the locals brought a shepherd and a dog up here. Oh, yeah, they said there was something that happened with a couple and, of dogs. Uh, kind of trying to intimidate people. I'm like, some guy had a, a German shepherd over there. Uh, I'm not, you know. I see one walking by today with doing a little early protest thing. Well, not the protest, but you know where they're going to get them in the morning. We are. I love them, huh? I'm not sure how it started, but um, there ended up being a confrontation between, uh, I don't know if they were undercover officers or uh, just some locals, but uh, these people were just in the intersection doing their chants and then next thing you know, <laughs> all hell breaks loose. But we're in a small town called Wolf City. Uh, we're out here trying to seek justice for Jonathan Price, he was murdered by a police officer Saturday night while breaking up a fight between a, a man and a woman. A uh, police officer showed up, tased. Uh, wit eyewitnesses at the scene said that they tased him and then shot him with his hands in the air. How you doing, Carol? <laughs> David? <laughs> there are some locals wanting to go hands back there, which is fine, you know. After that little melee, everybody's uh, adrenaline's pumping and blood is rushing everywhere. But 
A lot of these people want to forget that it was a, a police officer that murdered Jonathan Taylor the other night. It wasn't a, a you know, a crackhead. It wasn't some thug down the street looking to rob somebody. It was a, a Wolf City police officer that murdered. I think we're going to find when they uh, finally release his name, we're going to find out that this dude probably should not have even been a police officer. In a lot of these small towns, you see that uh, nepotism runs rampant. Um, it's all about who you know, not uh, whether you're capable for a job or a position. So we'll see. Jonathan! 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 But this is about a two hour, two and a half hour drive out of Dallas. No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! So yeah, if you guys get time, look up Jonathan Taylor. Man was outstanding. He's an outstanding citizen. From everything that we can read from him, he was a uh, just a model, a model citizen of what and how people should do. Even if he wasn't trying to be an agitator, if your dog's being aggressive to everybody, you probably should just leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't fault somebody for caring. Everybody should be caring. But he done that on purpose. Yeah. I'm a very first, very uh, strong advocate for the First Amendment, Second Amendment. Yeah, everybody, we're in a small town called Wolf City, Texas. Saturday night, um, Jonathan tried to break up a fight between a man and a woman at, at this gas station over here, this Exxon. And uh, the cops showed up and uh, ended up tasing Jonathan and then shooting him, killing him, murdering him. And uh, that's, what, that's what brought everybody out here. We had maybe 500, 2,000 people out here earlier. Right down there at that gas station, that's where Jonathan was murdered. We got this lady holding up a, an American flag upside down, letting everybody know that America's in, in distress. Looks like a cooler heads have prevailed tonight. Not sure if those guys are trying to agitate this crowd or not. Uh, the, they had one gentleman with the German Shepherd standing off to the side. His dog was being a, a little aggressive. As a dog owner, you should know 
that a situation like this is probably putting your dog under a lot of stress. Like, why would you put your dog under a lot of stress unless you're looking to uh, elevate people's emotions, you know? And if you, even if he was here peaceful, he should have, you know, he should have left. <clears throat> and we had some other guys show up and uh, come up to the edge of the crowd, open carrying. And uh, some of these people are saying they're undercover officers, but I'm not sure. But uh, this is Far East Texas. For the most part, the community was out here in force, showing their love and support for Jonathan. Um, now we just need to demand justice. We need the DA. We need the uh, local police officer chief to fire that officer, um, prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law with the proper charges, which should be murder in the first. And if, uh, Hopefully my reception is good, man. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. We're like two and a half hours away from Dallas. Did, uh, did that lady get her white dog? Did that lady ever get a hold of her white dog? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see where the dog was. Yeah, the, the white dog ran that way. Oh, God. The dog is scared because there's too much going on. We don't get no peace. We don't get no peace.
They went down there to, to get the dude arrested. They let him go. And then down uh, there, they were confirming some of the law enforcement that's so local. About, you know, so you have some family with some local people. Did that girl ever find a white dog? You know? They ran that way. Yeah, that's all. small town in East Texas called Wolf City.
Our streets! Our streets! So we're in Wolf City, Texas, and I'm sure these, these citizens here have never seen this before. But, um, you know, an innocent man was murdered the other night. We've got the local sheriff and the local PD down there probably. It looks like we got about eight officers down there. I'm sure it's hard for you guys to tell. But we're in, uh, we're in Wolf City, Texas. It's far east, north and east of uh, Dallas. We're in about two and a half hours out of Dallas. Uh, we had probably, I'm guessing maybe as high as a thousand people here tonight. Uh, seems like the whole community showed out and showed up to uh, give support to Jonathan Price. This is uh, Wolf City, Texas, very small town. They had a, we had a black man get murdered the other night at this gas station over here. Yeah, 
We're in a town called uh, Wolf City. Looks like things are about to wrap up. Sorry guys, my uh, reception must not be good because my live chat's not coming through. just a small town out here the uh, community came out in force to show uh, Jonathan Price love and support for both him and his family and friends officers down there now but um, they're uh, de-escalating they backed away and I know you do and I don't give a this, uh, this case already has a lot of national media attention or local media attention I'm sure it's going to get national but uh, Jonathan Price was murdered Saturday night right over there at that gas station They uh, shut down the the small highway here that's, that runs through town. <laughs> A lot of these locals are afraid that uh, these protesters and people coming out here are demanding justice um, are going to burn and loot things. And uh, as you all can see, not one rock's been thrown, not one window's been broken. Um, as far as I know, there's um, a lot of contention earlier, but I didn't, 
I didn't see anybody throw any fist. Nobody got assaulted. Uh, you guys get time. Look up Jonathan Price. Look up his story. He um he was up here getting gas the other night, Saturday night, and there was a man and a woman in an argument in a fight. I'm not sure if they were uh, to blows or not, but um Jonathan stepped in to to uh, be a peacemaker, and when the police officer showed up, he tased Jonathan. Eyewitnesses say that Jonathan had his eye, his hands up in the air and that the police officer tased him and then shot him. That's what local witnesses are saying. Uh, witnesses that live in this town. The, uh, the attorney that's representing the family, uh, civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, is demanding that the, uh, the officer get fired and that he get proper charges, uh, which would be murder, murder in the first and uh, anything else that the DA sees fit to, to press charges on them with. Uh, because as we see in all too often, the uh, DA and the, the police union do everything they can to not prosecute, to not do an investigation, to not bring the proper charges necessary to uh, bring justice to Jonathan and his family. But uh, thanks for coming to my channel, y'all. Um, I thought that it was going to go to fist to cuffs, and then I thought people were going to start shooting, shooting each other a little while ago. But um, we're in a far east Texas in a town called Wolf City. And that over there is where uh, Jonathan got murdered at, that gas station over there. But, uh, the police had shut down this little highway today in, antici in anticipation for this uh, vigil and vigil's last protest.
And when we got home, all of a sudden, zoom, zoom, eight, eight blazers with their lights on come down our street. So we thought something else. Was If I set this right here, can you guys just keep an eye on it for a second? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be back in one minute, guys. Not a, the guy who asked if he just said if they watch it for him. He had to go get some. So, yeah, I'm in the. Uh, <laughs> But no, for a while he just had his own shoulder. And when people started going for it, he pulled this thing right here. Oh, my car! It was my car! Uh, and I don't have a crash target! So I got that little triangle and it's like watching. Like, he's like, he's on the phone, he's like, he's on the phone, 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 he's on the you know what he said? Do you know what he told me? Was that when they were calling out the people? I don't, I don't know exactly what happened because I, I, I was just trying to, the ones that were, I was just trying to grab people that were running before. That's like, for real. For real. Yeah, that's who it was. That's who it was. It's like, y'all wanted the police to be kept and whatnot. That's all that was being said. But then, Hey Muhammad, I think I got some uh, I think I got some Ziploc baggies full of shit in my trunk. Hey, hold on. Let me. Hey, let me talk. Ain't nobody out here. Here we go again. Second time. All we doing is doing big photos. Why you out here with your mouth here? Do you know what that means, sir? Learn history. Learn your history. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> when the flag is hung upside down, it means that the country is in distress. Which is what's going on. The country is in distress. Maybe I need to tell them what it means. You might want to go explain. I might need to go explain to them why them. It was a couple of people defending Biden. Oh, it is. If they do, it's in the flag. I know. So if they do, they know. So y'all need to just educate me. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what. That, when the flag is hung upside down like it's that, distress. it means that the country is in a state of distress. Or the ship that's all whatever. Yeah. Don't tell me to shut up. Obviously, the country is in a state of distress. What happened there? 
So for those of you guys just joining us, we're in a small town in East Texas called Wolf City. Um, a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Price was just murdered here Saturday night. And uh, by a local police officer. Uh, Jonathan um, broke up a fight between a male and a female. The uh, police officer showed up. Eyewitnesses said that Jonathan had his hands up in the air. The police officer tased him and then proceeded to shoot him, killing him. No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! I can't read nothing in the live chat, guys. No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! Whole streets! Our 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 streets! But um, if you guys don't know it, look up Jonathan Price. If we don't get it, he uh, he's a gentleman that was murdered the other night. If we don't get no justice, they don't get no peace. If we don't get no justice, no sleep. My, uh, my chat keeps freezing, so I can't see nothing in, in the chat, guys. It's probably, I don't have really good re cell phone reception out here in the middle of nowhere. So uh, my live chat keeps freezing up. That group up there is uh, from East Texas. They're from Tyler. This group up there a little further ways. Hey, did they release the name of the officer yet? So the officer's name that murdered um, Jonathan, his name, first name is Lucas.
Oh, he's just parking right there. So we were in Wolf City tonight, Wolf City, Texas. It's about two and a half hour uh, east and north of Texas, or uh, Dallas, sorry. And uh, this is where uh, Jonathan Price was murdered the other night. Looks like things are wrapping up. Most of these people in uh, Wolf City have only seen stuff like this on TV. So uh, I'm sure this, this uh, hit pretty home, pretty close to home. That's it, everybody's leaving. How's it going? But yeah, that's, this is Wolf City. Uh, so they had, we had about 500 to 1,000 earlier in the crowd. Uh, it was very peaceful, very nice vigil, candlelight vigil that they had for uh, Jonathan. The whole city the whole uh, county, his team like came out in, in full force to support Jonathan. Um, it's actually really awesome to see. This is how a community should react every single time a citizen is murdered by a police officer, but not just by a police officer. This is the love and support that should be an example for all other cities to follow. It was phenomenal how many people came out to uh, support and show love for uh, Jonathan. So. All right guys, I'm gonna kill the live stream. Thanks for checking, hit that like button on the way out. And uh, we'll catch you guys later.